What's going on YouTube? Welcome to episode 155 of the USS Enterprise D tutorial. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. If you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button helping me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. Also, don't forget to check out the Discord. I'll have a link in the description below. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it today. Not a super long episode, actually only about 13 minutes. Uh, but we'll be picking up where we left off in uh, episode 154, working on the windows. And then we'll also be adding in a little bit more detail to the bottom side of our engines. So let's kick back, relax, and let's get started. Um, so what we're basically doing right here is that we're doing it very carefully, but we're adding in layers to our windows here. Or I should say levels. Levels and layers. Um, I like to take my time with this. And the other thing that I like to do also, and you're probably going to pick up on this, is that as I go up a row, I try not to have my windows in the exact same place as the other windows. Um, my main reason for doing this was that I had tried off camera doing this to where they all matched up, and they just... There was something about it where just it didn't look right to me. And for that reason, I decided that it looked a little bit better where if they're not matching up perfectly as we go deck to deck. It just seemed like it makes a little bit more sense. And I actually like that a lot more, you know. It just, uh, I feel like it kind of works out just a little bit better. But again, you know, apples and oranges, if you want your windows to match up as you go deck to deck i mean i say go for it you know because at the end of the day this is your build too uh if you're taking the time to do this tutorial all i'm trying to do here is to give you some ideas on things that you can do to incorporate in your ship and maybe if you're getting stuck to give you some ideas on things that you can do as well and also those of you that want to copy this thing one for one feel free to do so but that's the great thing about these builds is that they're customizable you know there's a million and one ways that we can do this and you know my way isn't the right way just one in a million of different ways that we can build this thing out You probably notice here that I'm just kind of hanging around the middle here and I'm not getting to the sides. I'm doing that on purpose because the sides is going to be the hardest part with adding in these windows because we're not going to have um, long stretches of rows to work with. We're going to be getting down to rows where we're like having maybe one block of window that we can add in because there's only a three block wide uh, dimension to work with. Um, You'll see what I mean when we get more to the sides when we cover that. I don't know if it'll be in today's episode, but we will get into it because we are going to at least, for the windows that we've started so far, we are going to finish those. That much I can absolutely say. Um, and I was thankful that I hopped on when I did um, to finish them. Um, yeah, you know, you see what I mean here? These on the sides, these windows match up. And I don't know why, but like it messes with me that they're exactly the same. Um, part of me wants to go in and change them so they're not matching. Yeah, as you can see here, as we're going on the sides here, we don't have a lot of real estate on this row where my cursor's at. We, we really, we don't have a lot of room to work with here. But I was keeping my cursor here because I wanted to have my starting point. I wanted to make sure that I'm starting it exactly where I want to start this at. You don't have to be exact with what I'm doing here. But the important thing to remember is that if when we do one thing on one side, we need to do it on the other. And it needs to match up. So that's the most important thing here, that we want to make sure that everything that we're doing 
on the level that we're on right now. Now that we're working on the sides, we're going to start working our way in to fill in those sides. Um, that anything that we're adding in, it's going to be something that we can easily, not well not easily get to, but we need to basically count out the layer that we're on so that this way we can apply it to the other side. And that's the easiest way to do it, you know, just zip around the other side, make sure that, because really what I'm doing is I'm following this white concrete uh, row, and that's what I'm building off of. Um, it's one of the ways that you can do it. You could always count off of the middle off or the very center and go up your rows to count it if you need to, but this is a nice and quick way of doing it, just keeping your cursor on the level that you're on and moving around the other side of the ship. Um, you have to do it carefully, but it can be done, and you, it, it's something that... You know, it looks like I'm doing easily, but you have to remember, too, this is something I've been doing for a while, and I've just have gotten used to it. Um, in the beginning, when I first tried to start doing that, like, I kind of had problems a little bit, but then I realized, I'm like, well, when I'm moving on the side, if I don't move the right stick all that much, and I just use the left stick to move, um, I should be in good shape. And that ended up being the case. You know, where I can just go from one end to the other and just kind of wrap around it. And now that we've got our layer of windows down, now we don't even have to do that because we've got our placement. Yeah, and see, and this is what I mean here, like when we're getting the sides, we don't have a lot of room because the rule that I'm trying to maintain is that I don't want to have a window on a corner unless I absolutely have to. And that's going to be a problem that we're going to have here because once we start to get more on the sides, like we're, we've only got two and one as far as row, as far uh, as a part pattern that it goes, uh, it jumps between two and one, and then it's not until we get towards the middle or the very middle of the sides here where it starts to get more uh, blocks of real estate. So we're going to have to make the decision of either sticking to that pattern as much as we can or. Um, not breaking it, but if we don't break it, then we can't add those windows in the sides. So we're pretty much going to have to break it. But, you know, again, um, rules can be broken. And sometimes you can veer away from these things if you have to. You know, we did a little bit of that when we were working on the neck um, of the ship. You know, we kind of veered away from going uh, precisely off the cut line in the, um, when we were working on that portion of the ship. And it worked out. It worked out just fine. You can definitely get away with that when you have to. Um, but, you know, it's not something that I, that I like to, to do very often. There's not really that much else I can say about the windows here. I'm just going to let this run out because uh, I want you guys to be able to see the placement on. Fortunately... It's just, it's going to be tedious in this episode because there's not really anything that we can skip over here because I'm doing these one at a time. And there's, um, as we get closer or more and more along the sides here, it's going to get harder to add in these blocks. And as you can see, I'm still trying to stay within my pattern as much as I can uh, that I've set for myself where I need to have a white block at least on each side of my window. The easiest thing to do with that is just go a little bit of, off of each side. So now you can see I zipped around. I used the same technique off the very front there, and I went along the sides to make sure that I'm starting at the same point as my windows I was just working on the front. Now I'm going to use this technique again to go over to the left side to start adding in my first rows of windows on this level. <sighs> so that's looking pretty good. 
Uh, well, while that's going, I'm trying to think of um, some Star Trek related stuff that we could talk about. Um, those of you that missed out on uh, the episodes I was talking about, I'm not going to be doing a full season review on Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing with that when the season is done, I'm probably going to put an episode out on that. But I've just ultimately decided that I'm not going to be doing a review for every single episode. Um, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew with the channel. And believe it or not, um, having trying to hit four episodes a week on Minecraft can be a lot. And then when you start adding in, doing reviews on top of that with everything else in the grand scheme of life, it can get it can get uh, it can become a lot. Uh, so I think what I'll do um, in between uh, until the uh, season ends is I'll, I'll just talk about how I've been feeling about it in my Minecraft episodes, which is what I've been doing in the past before I even did those two reviews. And um, so, I mean, talking about Strange New Worlds a little bit, um, they had a really interesting episode this past week um, that, like, the ship... Um, came across this entity that changed the uh, uh, that basically like uh, put like this fairy tale ac uh, across the ship and it was the story that Dr. Mbago was reading to his daughter and this entity basically clings onto his daughter and projects the story onto the ship so the entire crew uh, they forget who they are and they become these characters in this episode and you know I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great episode of Star Trek. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more, not necessarily that specifically, but I want to see them branch out a little bit more because like, even like with that episode, um, it reminds me of things that they've kind of done in the past. Um, I want to say the episode of TNG um, that kind of reminded me, I want to say it was Fistful of Datas, because they had a couple of episodes that they did that were in the Wild West. Um, but fi I don't know why Fistful of Datas keeps coming to mind. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think it's cool that they're bringing back, you know, that classic Trek, but it still kind of feels like they're just, you know, kind of copying what Next Generation has done and then the original series. Um, I think when they go in, Season 2 has already been you know, completed, I think. Um, so really not much that they can do about it for the first two seasons. But season three, I'm hoping that, um, I basically I want to see them do original Star Trek stories instead of just double tapping stuff that they've done in the past. I think it's, you know, a great exercise for the writers of the show to get into, uh, to get, you know, uh, acclimated to writing Star Trek and it's not a knock against them, but the writers that they have that are working on the current version uh, or the current versions of Star Trek um, it's not traditional Star Trek and uh, I talked about this in other episodes that I've done that you know George uh, not George uh, Gene Roddenberry had a, uh, a manual that he made on how to write the perfect Star Trek episode like I wish that they give that to the producers of Discovery you know to kind of help them out a little bit um because it's the same people that are working on Strange New Worlds. But, you know, with that being said, still, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just happy to have Star Trek back. It's the best thing that they've had out so far um, since Star Trek Enterprise. And, like, those of you that have followed me on the channel, you know that I love the Kelvin timeline. But <sighs> the Kelvin timeline, like, it's not really Star Trek. It's more of an action movie. Um... And that's another thing that, you know, I, when they do Star Trek 4, like, if they just have another villain, I'm, I'm going to be so over it. Like, I want to see the crew face a problem again. But, you know, we'll talk about that more in other episodes. Um, I really didn't get a chance to even mention the stuff that we were just working on. This piece that sits directly underneath the uh, engine, we're going to be changing that from the uh, light gray to a slightly darker gray just so it stands out a little bit more um and i think that'll look a lot nicer yeah see comparing it when we we're just looking at that piece right here swapping that out for a darker color you know again you know we're, we're bringing out 
the angles here, or not the angles, but the line work a little bit more. And then adding in that darker color there, I think brings out that area just a little bit more than what, what we had before. So I did that on the right side. I, you guys do that on the left side now. I'm going to be doing that off camera as well. And then um, we'll pick up in episode 156. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap us up today. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. And if you have any questions regarding today's episode, be sure to drop a comment below. I definitely love hearing from everybody. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to wrap us up today. I just uh, hope everybody has a happy and safe week. And, of course, what did you make in Minecraft today? Let me know in the comments section. All right, I'll catch you in the next episode.